Hello and welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to this second edition of my Orkney travel vlog. I am excited to bring to you some of the day to day happenings that I got to participate in on the farm. If you are a patron of this podcast, a deep heartfelt thank you. I so appreciate all that choose to share their insight and comment and financial support on this creative journey. I will be filling you in on treasures that I found abroad as well as my knitting. I'm so glad you're here. Let's catch up. If I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem, if I posted a Edie is one of the Northern Isles, and it is about a two-hour ferry ride from Kirkwall. I participated in a lot of different types of farm chores. This is a beef and sheep operation, and I just wanted to grab different observations as I was out and about to capture what life is like here in the summer months. I'm looking forward to going back next year and hopefully getting some footage of clipping. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy just getting a feel for the landscape that is Edie and joining in some of the adventures we had. I wanted to make sure to offer my deepest heartfelt thanks to Mark and Louise of Furzness Farm for hosting me and allowing me to share this with you.
Welcome to the knitting portion of the episode. I want to reiterate here at the beginning how deeply grateful I am to those that contribute financially to this project. And I am looking forward to um, enriching and enhancing the content that happens here. And I really couldn't do it without the motivation um, and interest that patrons show through their financial support so thank you so much i also deeply appreciate the insight that is gathered through comments i read them all i don't always get time to respond in the way that i would like but i um, am really grateful that you take the time to do that i am told um, that liking and subscribing and comments uh, especially on youtube can really help with traction around the channel so thank you so much for taking the time to do that let's talk about the knitting Last time I talked about my knitting endeavors, it was in a bit of a chaotic state and I was not feeling overly motivated or inspired by anything and I was having a hard time settling on projects, what I could do, what I couldn't do, what it required for, um, you know, did I have to re-engineer stuff, I wanted to add a chart, etc. So in that kind of chaotic state. Um, I, I landed on a project. This was prior to leaving for Scotland. In that moment, I hadn't decided what I would be taking. And again, I had this angst about that, which was in hindsight, ridiculous. Um, but where did I land? I ended up back here in Folk Shawls. This is by Cheryl Oberly. And I'm not surprised that I came back to this. I have been feeling over the past year or so just a draw towards some nostalgic knits um, prior to the days of Ravelry and podcasts, like when I used to drive to the yarn store and they'd go through their binder of um, patterns um, or you'd buy a book. And this was one of the first books I bought. So folk shawls, I, I decided I would work on the Litla Diamond Shawl. And this is a Faroese shawl and, and in construction. And I thought that I had enough of an Icelandic fingering weight to knit it. I thought that would be perfect. It'd be everything coming together, but I didn't have enough. And so in conversation with a friend, um, we were looking at knitting this together and I opted to knit it in Honor Ak Air Nutiden single strand. This is one of their natural colorways. I think it's called Maneg. I ordered this, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, and I thought this would be great. And I I recognize that the end product of a single strand of unspun is going to be light and airy and cozy and all of the you know lofty, warm, all of those elements. But the process of knitting that shawl <laughs> is not as intuitive to me as, um, as others. So I'm having to really um, reposition my hand and how I tension the yarn, obviously, because A, it's a single strand and the staple length is a, not, it's not super long, it's not super short. Um, and I'm wanting to make sure that I'm capturing enough fiber in the stitch when I throw it, that it has some integrity. I've noticed in the fabric in some instances when I've looked back, there's like stitches that are like one hair. Um, and I've gone back and reinforced that with more yarn. I've been a bit better about attending to that um, in my knitting now, so I'm um, adding more yarn if I need to, um, right in the stitch. <laughs> but it does require a little bit more attention and tensioning uh, to make it work. Not to say that the end result isn't beautiful, there are moments of that I really enjoy it and I get into flow. But for the most part, I do find that I'm, you know, interrupting that myself um, or just attending in a different way to make sure that I capture enough fiber because I am a thrower. When I cast this on, I included a single strand of mohair because I wanted to make sure that I could tension the cast on edge and that it had some um, strength as well. I use a German twisted cast on which allows a little bit more stretch and I wanted to continue that for the bottom edge of the shawl so it wasn't pulling in. And I think I did, I don't know, this is like my third take, but this shawl is knit bottom up. 
and I could have re-engineered it top down, but frankly, I didn't want to <laughs> in that moment. So I cast on the whatever hundred many stitches there are at the bottom and I'm working my way up. I'm just about ready to start the lace shaping in the center of the shawl. And oh, you can see there's one of those, maybe you can't, um, uh, which I think is gonna be um, really fun. And again, the end result of this light, airy, fluffy, lofty, all those things um, that are perfect for wrapping around your neck to hold in some heat. I don't believe that this shawl is going to be like my canoeing and my ski shawl. Um, I think it's going to be a, have a bit of tenderness to it um, and uh, be that perfect wrap for sitting on the, you know, at my parents' house, um, you know, during the winter time when there's no wood stove heat. Um, this is going to be something. Um, for that type of application. Keep dropping stitches. So that is the Litla Diamond Shawl by Cheryl Oberly from Folk Shawls. Now, what did I end up taking with me on the trip? Well, if you are a patron, you saw my Orkney vlog and I did detail a little bit of the um, sweater that I ended up casting on, which was, and if I can find it, oh, it's here. Um, this is the high low, the high low shawl, uh, the high low sweater by Deborah Parcella, and this was for Tidal Yarns, and you can get this with purchase of yarn. I wanted to knit from the knitted Kalevala, the I can find it, the Solalu sweater, and. I wasn't super partial to the construction of the sweater um, in the book. And I thought that I would just re-engineer it to raglan shaping. And that was kind of where I was stumbling right before I was leaving. Like, can I do that? I gotta shut my windows because it's raining. Hold on. I think I was talking a little bit about the Salalu sweater, that I wasn't really interested in the construction that was included in the book. And so I was thinking that a stockinette or a raglan shaping would be better with an insertion of the chart. And so the High Low by Deborah Parcella was perfect to do that. And so I didn't need to come up with my own pattern. I didn't need to, you know, reverse engineer, re-engineer anything. And so Ironically, I've only needed to add an extra few stitches here or there to make sure that I have enough to complete the chart. So, where is that sweater? Here it is. I cast this on in the airport at Logan in Boston, and when I got home, I had already cast off um, for the sleeves. I've tried it on, I like the way it looks. I'm not sure how I'm gonna finish the collar, but you do go back and pick that up. And yeah, so I really like this pattern because it does work as a canvas. So you could put any number of charts in there once you kind of finagled your stitches and your gauge. Um, so I'm super happy to have this in my library. I love the fabric, the way it's turning out. It's lightweight and um, so couldn't be happier. I knew it would all resolve itself if I could just get enough kind of oomph to cast something on and commit and lean into the skill sets that I do actually have when it comes to knitting. Although I didn't feel like it after that uh, fiasco with my last knitted Kalevala sweater. So this is going to be a combination of the Solalu and the High Low. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but the pattern is available with purchase of yarn from Patricia. So that is on the go, and I worked on that quite heavily while I was away, and will continue to work on that when I leave for the Yukon, and probably when I go to Sweden. So, um, so this will be a mainstay. The other, pa uh, the other pattern, the other um, project that I worked on while I was abroad was the Trondheim cardigan. This is by Sophia Capella of Sophia Tales. And I've been working on this for a while. It's knit in cashmere people yarns. And I 
put a few rows on in the airport, but really my heart was with that Tidal Yarns. Everything about it, the texture, the color, the fabric, it was moody and I just, I really loved it. This was a, this is a little bit more bright and cheerful maybe, I don't know. Um, but again, I did work on it um, actually quite a bit in London Heathrow and I think probably the kind of the softness and the simplicity, the minimalism of the high-low was really appealing to where I was um, cognitively. Um, and this maybe, again, required a little bit of um, wherewithal uh, to keep track of this chart. I am having a hard time. Um, I, this chart is not intuitive to me. I've, I haven't knit it probably enough to just pick it up and do it. So it does require a little bit more of my attention. So, but I did work on that. I plan on taking that with me as well when I'm traveling. So those two are my kind of um, traveling projects. I'm not gonna cast on, she says, I don't think I'm gonna cast on anything else, but we'll see. Uh, and the other thing that I've been working on, I picked it up when I got home, is the Froken Guard from Kof de Boken. And I have taken my friend's translation of this pattern, used the chart that I have in my book, um, and basically, just redesigned it. Um, I kind of use my own numbers. I've done short row shaping. I redid the collar. Um, I'm knitting this in Hillesvog, um Vilja, which is the cream, and I'm knitting it in <laughs> Hillesvog Solia, which is the cognac color. <coughs> and I am working on the sleeve, and I am about to make some decisions around um, decreasing. So I need to kind of figure that out. I've tried it on a number of times. I have blocked it to just kind of make sure that I like everything about it before I put all that energy into my sleeve. Um, and so I'm gonna make some decisions around um, decreasing and then the cuff, which I think I'm probably gonna have mirror the hem, which I did in this um, just garter stitch. So yeah, so it's great to kind of reinvigorate this project. I do find this particular chart very easy to memorize and see, um, and so I'm reading it um, easily. And so it's super easy to pick up and do. I will not be taking this with me um, for traveling. It's just bulky. Um, it's gonna be coming to the end of a part and the beginning of a new part. So I don't think it's gonna lend itself necessarily to anything in an airplane or an airport um, or maybe even an RV. So my husband and I are driving uh, a classy small RV while we are vacationing in the Yukon. So try to keep everything else simple as we kind of learn the ropes of that new adventure. So that's kind of it for the knitting pieces. I thought I would talk a little bit about what I brought home from Orkney here at the end of the podcast. Um, and First of all, from Orkney Tweed, um, always hard to resist that shop. My prized possession from, um, from Nancy is this blanket. <clears throat> and I purchased this um, my first time that I went to Orkney Tweed. So I've had it for a while and I absolutely love it. It's one of my prized possessions. Um, and so that's one piece of the tweed that I have. I did not bring home any fabric. Um, she doesn't sell the fabric by the yard. Um, and uh, so I've tried to incorporate the made goods into my lifestyle. So I actually have a coffee cozy in some of the tweed. I purchased this year um, one of her wallets to replace my wallet. And so just that way I can have a little bit of Orkney tweed in my life every day. I picked up a golf cap for my nephew. Um, he does like to play golf. He plays in a little club at school, he plays with his um, Pepe. And I actually think he'll just wear this for fun because that's the kind of guy he is. He loves um, the bow ties that I brought back from Scotland for him. He's a wool person. And um, yeah, so I think that this uh, cap will be perfect. So I brought that home from him, from Nancy. And the other thing I brought home, which isn't necessarily Orkney Tweed, but from Nancy's shop, is this leather bag. This was a real um, treat for myself. I 
recognized this piece of work as really unique and special. And so I felt like it was something I wanted to invest in. And it is made in Orkney from a leather worker whose father was a saddle, who attended a saddlery course, um, but ended up teaching his daughter um, those skills and she has put it into the use of making bags. She has collaborated with Nancy on creating some leather bags that use Orkney Tweed, but this obviously particular one doesn't. And let's see, handcrafted Orkney leather. Um, and that's the name of her company. Find us online at Orkney Leather. And she is on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, her name is Jo. So this particular piece came home with me from Nancy's shop. This was my big investment. So that was kind of um, the haul of tweed. I did bring home some yarn from Nancy. Um, I already have um, some of Nancy's yarn, which is um, I'm using for a shawl or plan to use for a shawl. Um, but I picked up all the other colors because before I just had one color. So I picked up one each of all of the different colors that she produces. And just to have, <clears throat> um, and so I brought that home. These are sold in 25 gram lots, about 105 meters. They're spun and prepared and spun in Shetland from Orkney wool um, from Nancy Sheep. So like Zwartbloss, Romney, Cheviot blends. Um, so and you can get this from Nancy's shop. The other thing for wool that I brought home was some uh, North Ronaldsey. This is from the Isle of Oscari. Um, and I don't have a lot of information about them, but maybe next year we'll be visiting. We'll have to see. But I brought home some North Ronald Z, um, which has a really nice hand to it. Doesn't have that coarse, kind of biting, hairy um, texture. It has like just a nice, soft, um, kind of plump hand. So I was interested to see all the different ways that this can respond to spinning and preparation. So I love us scary native Orkney fine wool yarn from undyed North Ronald Z. Both are um, natural colors of the sheep. So that was kind of the textile haul. So leather and tweeds and wool. And the other things that I purchased when I was there were a couple books. Um, I picked up Wild Light by Angela Harding, A Printmaker's Day and Night. <clears throat> I saw this on Natasha Newton's channel. She is an, um, an artist and her YouTube channel, Behind the Studio Door, I've just really been enjoying. You saw or you will see um, some um, techniques that I've picked up from her and I've been really, like I said, enjoying uh, using in my own um, practice. So anyway, she had brought up this book and then I saw it at the Orcadian, the bookshop in town. And so I picked it up and it's just really a beautiful um, book of lino cuts and her life throughout the year and the way she sees the world and uses her art to interpret that. So um, yeah, she actually has a line of notebooks um, and small passport sized um, lined uh, notebooks I picked up as well um, as gifts for my mom and my niece, uh, but this one stayed with me. And then the other books that I picked up, one was um, the Orkney Book of Birds. So I got to see a lot of species um, in uh, the islands that I don't normally get to see here. Um, one of them was a lapwing this year. I've never seen a lapwing um, and they are rare in the North America. Um, and pied wagtails. Um, I saw the burrowing owl. Um, hen harrier, which is also called a goshawk. And um, so I'm trying to think of the other kind of seabirds, um, you know, guillemots, ox, and razorbacks, gannets. Anyway, this book is, it's just really beautifully illustrated. And <clears throat> so I spend a lot of time um, there and I just, I love birds. I love the artwork. Um, some more examples of that. So this is by Tim Dean and it's illustrated by Tracy Hall. So I got that. And it has a sister book, which is <laughs> the Orkney 
book of wildflowers. So I got the set. This is by Tim Dean and it's illustrated by Ann Bignall. And she used to be the ranger on ED and led a lot of art classes and um, walks and other things. And I actually did one with her, uh, Louise and I did. Um, but again, it's just really beautiful artwork um, of the islands. And I like the way the book is set up. So I picked those two up as well. So a couple treasures to remind me of my time there. Um, it is like a second home and they are like a second family to me. So, um, right. So just being able to connect even more with place, um, the books seemed a, a vehicle to do that with. The last thing I picked up for myself was from Allegory, and I have a couple pieces of her jewelry. Um, this particular one is a match to the ring that I have. So this ring is um, uh, based off of the design. Ooh, Jay's. This um, this particular style is based off of the hilt of a sword that was unearthed in Finland as one of the archeological digs. And so I picked up the bracelet, this companion bracelet. So it has the um, twining dragon heads on the front, but it does have detail all the way around. And that was from Allegory. So that was kind of my, the bag and the bracelet. The bag was, um, a surprise treasure. Um, the bracelet was something I had been thinking about and saving for for a long time and so I finally was able to pull a trigger on that particular piece. But overall, um, yeah, I've super found a lot more inspiration than just necessarily going for the wool. I loved being able to find some interesting books um, as well as um, you know, the leather pieces um, and kind of just expand my understanding of the craft uh, work that is happening in the islands itself. I have brought home some pottery in the past um, and I did look this year for some pottery, but I didn't see anything um, right off the bat, but there's always next year. So let's see, now that the thunderstorm and the rain has passed, let's hope that that uh, didn't affect the background sound too much. On that note, I'm gonna bid you a fond farewell, many fond wishes and blessings. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time. Bye.